Flash Fiction Friday, Episode 84, Playing the Hero, by Ken Jacobson. Rayo sat alone in the corner of the seedy tavern, his boots perched on the small table in front of him. The blonde dancing girl on the small dais at the front of the drinking hall tried to look sensual as she undid her one remaining shoulder tie. It smacked of effort and suppressed nerves, but Rayo couldn't fault her for being nervous. Not with this lecherous audience of toughs and drunks and drunk toughs. And besides, she had fantastic breasts, so her quavering voice and shaky hands were forgivable. Rayo spat a wad of tobacco juice in the tin cup he held. Such a nasty habit, but that's what this place was for. Nasty habits. And Rayo was full of them. He hadn't always been like this, unshaven and unkempt both in body and spirit. He'd been a soldier once, a warrior, a hero. Like most of the men of the kingdom, Rayo had fought in the demon war that raged thousands of miles to the east. A generational war fought to keep the darkness at bay. He'd fought hard, unlike some of his companions who were there simply to satisfy expectant kin. Not Rayo. Rayo had believed, truly believed, and it had been his downfall. Full of idealistic complacency, he'd almost been killed by a demon. Acedia, he'd later learn its name was. The result of his wound and defeat was that Rayo left the front only a year into his obligatory military service. Upon returning to the city, Rayo received a hero's welcome, something he knew he didn't deserve, for he'd only been playing the hero. Still, he tried to put the past behind him and move forward, even going so far as to marry a noblewoman. Anya was her name, and she was so far above Rayo's station that he could scarce believe she ever deigned to speak to him, let alone marry him. But that was Anya. She only saw the best in people. That had been her mistake. The problem was, demon wounds didn't heal. Oh, flesh, blood, and bone could be mended, but demons attacked with more than just claws and teeth, and Acedia was notorious for psychic manipulation and striking both at body and soul, leaving hidden poison that not even the best healers could discover. This tactic was especially insidious as years could pass before the damage would surface. It had been these hidden wounds that had left Rayo's union with Anya in ruins and led Rayo to places like this tavern. Rayo scoffed. A bitter sound full of self-loathing coated in sadness. His marrying such a high lady had been the demon war all over again. Him trying to be something he wasn't, disappointing everyone when he failed. He ground his teeth. How many times could he spectacularly fail and still have the nerve to try again? To promise others he could do better. He was arrogant to think himself ever the hero. But it's all he ever wanted to be. The singing girl let her corset drop to the floor, eliciting a raucous chorus of lewd calls and perverted promises, some sounding almost like threats. Rayo unabashedly studied every curve of her naked flesh, finding much to appreciate in her. But for some reason, not much stirred within him in the way of lust. Oh, there was feeling, but it was so empty, so meaningless. Yet it helped soothe him, helped him forget. Almost. Fire flickered in Rayo's chest, and he started. It wasn't the thrill of lust. It wasn't even the twisting of heartache. It was the divine flame. He hadn't felt that in a while, and certainly never in this place. Like many of his fellows, Rayo bore the torch of El, a power gifted to him when he was younger to help him fight the demon horde to the east. Yet, his wound and his failures had led him to cut himself off from the power and shame and self-hatred. It didn't often come unbidden like this, at least not since Rayo had been on the front lines. Not since he'd been in the presence of a demon. But that was impossible. Demons couldn't enter the city. The wardings prevented that. Rayo glanced around the room and found another gorgeous, scandalously dressed woman sitting in the lap of a burly man with a curly black beard and a scalp so bald it reflected the candles in the hanging chandelier. The brute brazenly groped the woman who laughed and politely repositioned the man's thick hand to more appropriate places. He whispered something in her ear and she giggled and whispered back. This made the man produce a coin purse and set it on the table. The woman opened it, examined its contents, and then with a satisfied nod, 
secreted the small pouch somewhere in her ample cleavage. The two stood, and that's when Rayo took notice of the large hunting knife that hung from the brute's belt. A sudden cold sickness told Rayo that something was very, very wrong, and before he realized it, he was standing and following the two out of the tavern. They exited through the kitchen into an adjoining alley. Rayo didn't try to use stealth. There wasn't time. He found the two in the alley. The woman pressed up against the wall as the man kissed and fondled her. The brute reached for his belt but stopped when Rayo conspicuously cleared his throat. The two looked at him with mirroring expressions of annoyance. This ain't a peep show, the man barked. Move along! I don't think so, friend. Rayo produced a knife from his right coat sleeve. The brute stepped back from the woman and pulled his own knife. I'm only going to ask you one more time, friend. He spat back the word in a mocking copy of Rayo's tone. Words didn't matter anymore. They wouldn't defuse the situation. So Rayo didn't answer. Instead, he spun his blade so that he held it by its tip and hurled it. At the woman. The knife sank into her chest and she collapsed without so much as a groan. The curly beard brute's mouth hung open and he stammered, w w Why? And then his face darkened. He took a step toward Rayo but froze when the woman on the ground grabbed his ankle. Run! Rayo shouted, but it was too late. With unnatural strength, the woman pulled the massive brute down so fast that he hit the street face first with a crunch that cut off his startled cry. The woman leapt on the man's back and began tearing into him with sharp teeth and elongating black fingernails. Rayo had only one weapon available to him, El's torch. He reached for the power and found it there, waiting and willing, but he couldn't bring himself to channel it. Doing so would burn him, for he was unworthy of channeling it. Always unworthy. So instead, Rayo hurled himself toward and tackled the woman who now only resembled a woman in the most basic sense. Her eyes had turned black and bloody fangs descended from the roof of her mouth. Black talons had replaced her hands and her skin was sloughing off revealing the bloody sinew beneath. Rayo found himself on top of her. She looked him in the eyes and the poison corroding his soul recognized her empty gaze. Acedia. Hello, Rayo, she said, followed by a wild cackle. Didn't think you'd ever see me again, did you? How did you get past the wards? No demon has entered this city in two centuries. Her only response was another derisive cackle. How? Rayo screamed. Oh, honey, you can't be that naive. Do you think I'm the first? Do you think I'm the only one? More laughing. Rayo reached for the handle of his knife still protruding from the monster's breast, but she caught his hand with hers, it coming up in a blur so fast that Rayo hadn't even registered it until it was too late. She grinned, her mouth a hellish medley of fangs, blood, and pieces of the poor brute dying on the pavement a few feet behind them. She grinned, her mouth a hellish medley of fangs, blood, and pieces of the poor brute dying on the pavement a few feet behind them. Rayo knew he had no choice. It was going to hurt like hell, but if he didn't do it, he would die, and then others would die. He reached for the divine fire and pulled it into him. It hurt worse than any physical burn Rayo could remember sustaining. Someone was screaming and Rayo realized that the sound belonged to him. It was his own voice calling out in an explosion of agony that frightened him. The fire coursed through him and then exploded outward in an eruption of white light. The demon's screams joined his and she shrieked as her black eyes boiled and her flesh melted. Although it only lasted a few heartbeats, the process of incinerating the aberration the woman had become felt as though it lasted years, decades, centuries. And then it was done, and Rayo found himself lying atop a smoldering corpse. He rolled off the dead monster and onto his back. He sucked in deep breaths as he stared at the night sky. Do you think I'm the only one? The last time the demon war had come to man, it had nearly ended in mankind's extinction. Hence the generational ritual of sending young men out to fight on a battlefront safely located thousands of miles away. Rayo started to laugh uncontrollably. God was mocking him for sure. Of all the torchbearers, why should he, an unworthy failure and coward, be the one to learn this terrible secret? Why did he have to be the one to warn the people? Would they even listen to him? Rayo continued laughing until tears blinded his sight. He was a joke. 
God's joke. For El knew, Rayo would do it. El knew he couldn't help but fight to try to play the hero. Again. It was Rayo's curse to try, even when he knew he'd fail. Always try, and always fail. After his bitter tears and laughter subsided, Rayo stood. He'd planned to get drunk and maybe cuddle a bit with a whore. But now, now again, he had to play the hero. Thanks for listening. If you have a flash fiction story you'd like read on our podcast, please submit it by going to immortal-works.com. And you better like, share, and rate this podcast if you want to get into heaven when you die. Her eyes had turned black and bloody fangs descended from the roof of her mouth. Black talons had replaced her hands and her skin was sloughing off, revealing the bloody sinew beneath. She sounds hot. (laughs) Dibs. Anyway, that's typical of anything I do with women. I don't even... (laughs) It's just like, well... (laughs) I'm concerned that they collapse. Yeah. (laughs) I think they're just playing dead, so I'll leave. (laughs) They're playing possum. Oh, sad. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's awesome. That's good, man. Yeah.